What's going on guys, Alger Stasio here with FlightPath.com. Now in this video, I have the new DJI Osmo Mobile 3 and this one is a foldable design mobile gimbal. And as you can see here on my table, I have a bunch of other mobile stabilizers. I have the Movi right here. And as you can see the size difference with that one. And I also have the Osmo Mobile 2. So as you can see, if you're not using it, this is the size of it. This is what it looks like compared to the new foldable DJI Osmo 3. Now when it comes to the size goes, I mean, nothing really beats the Osmo Pocket. As you can see here, the size of the Osmo Pocket is super small, super tiny. It's smaller than the handle of this Mobile 3. But I think the main reason why there's still a big market for mobile stabilizers and gimbals is because the cameras on the new phones have been getting better and better. So of course, if you want to add another layer of stabilization to the cameras of these mobile devices, you're going to need something like a handheld mobile gimbal. So in this video, let's go through the new DJI Osmo Mobile 3. Of course, we have this foldable design, which is really cool, makes it easy to transport, and of course, a little bit more compact. Uh, but they also brought back the trigger, which is a big deal for a lot of people. They brought back the trigger, which the Osmo 2 did not have. As you can see here, we brought that back. So in this video, let's just kind of go through some of the basics of the gimbal, as well as some of the features that I felt I really benefited from after using it for the past couple of weeks, as well as some things I think they might be able to improve on. And of course, before we get into the review, let's get this thing unboxed to show you exactly what comes in the case. And here's the front of the Osmo mobile box. Just has a picture of it expanded out already. And on the other side, it has what it looks like when it's collapsed. Mm -hmm. So we got two things in the box. A box, and it looks like a carrying case that's wrapped up. Take this out of the little plastic in very DJI fashion. Kind of feels like if you have a Mavic Air, Kind of feels like one of those cases that the Mavic Air came in, which is that gray kind of fabric material, but it is a hard case. Nice and cutely packed in there. And that's really all it is, it's just a little case. And it has a bunch of stickers all around. And then open it up and another pad in there. And that's it, you just open it up just like so and it comes just like that. And there's little notches that it slides into and that way it stays closed just like that. And then as far as the mobile device goes, if you want to lock that too, turn it and it locks into place. So this is your Osmo Mobile 3 foldable gimbal for your mobile device. Disclaimer, safety guidelines, as well as quick start guide. A little mini tripod, just like that, because at the very bottom, there is a quarter 20, so let's uh, screw that in. Nice to know there's a USB-C and not a micro USB like some of the older ones. So USB-C, charge port to a USB. We also have this little pad here. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'm assuming it's probably to add a little bit more padding to some of the areas here if you need to. It comes with a wrist strap, so nice to see. Unlike the pocket, they did not put an area to put a wrist strap on it, which of anything, this one should have had it. But it looks like there is one right here. There's a little notch at the very bottom of the Osmo Mobile 3 for your wrist strap. I wish they had that on the Osmo Pocket. So if you don't want to carry around your hard case and you want to just toss it into the bag by itself, it looks like it comes with a little pouch, which is pretty cool. Now I've actually using the Osmo 2 for a little while now, of course, until it, you know, the Osmo Pocket came out as well as the Osmo Action. Now these are definitely three different types of accessories, three different types of cameras that you're gonna be using. And the use cases are all different. So if you're used to using your mobile phone and you just wanna enhance it and get a lot smoother shots or cinematic shots, or just to have a lot better, just overall quality while you're shooting, then this is something that you might wanna look into if you wanna enhance your mobile videography or photography. Now, first and foremost, the obvious one is it's foldable. So at least now you can actually somewhat stick it into your pocket. Or for me, I always wear car shorts so for me it's a lot easier but it's definitely not small it's not you know an osmo pocket small but it's definitely smaller so at least if you know you're gonna be throwing it into your bag or your backpack you don't have to carry around things like this which i'm sure you guys are familiar with 
uh, when the Ajmo 2 as well as when the Zoom, you know, Smooth Q came out, you're carrying around this little, kind of like a little mini guitar. So at least you know you don't have to carry around this size, you can actually carry around something a lot smaller if you just want to have something stabilized on your mobile device. Now the one thing I do like about the Osmo 3 is that you actually only have one balance point and that's really the phone that goes in right up the very front. Now if you looked at the other ones, the Mobile 2 as well as some of the other gimbals, you're gonna have to balance it in either two or three different points. Here you really just have to do it in one point which is, makes it super easy. So all you have to do is place your phone right here in the middle. So there you go. Now it's balanced on the phone side. Now once you open it up and power it on, there you go. And there it is, it's fully balanced. You don't have to do any of the other adjustments like you would have to do on some of the other ones. You'd have to do it in not just the mobile phone side, you'd have to do it right here on this arm as well as down below. And this is definitely one of the key features with this gimbal. You can actually start off in portrait or horizontal mode, double click it, now it's switching it to portrait, double click it again, goes back into horizontal. You don't have to actually physically move the mount, you don't have to move any adjustments. It's just ready to go. Now one of the big things with the Osmo Mobile 3 is that everything is now controlled through the actual grip itself. Now before you would have to kind of do a hybrid of both. You would either normally use the grip for some controls, then you'd have to touch the screen for some of it. Here they pretty much incorporated all of the controls into these buttons here as well as now they brought back the trigger. But if I were to triple tap the trigger now, one, two, three, it now switches from the back camera to the front cam. So if you wanted to do some selfie talking like just like this, or some vlogging, you're able to do that. Then you can quickly go from that front camera, switch it back, one, two, three, and then you're now switching it back to the back camera. So I'm able to shoot back this way. And of course, if your gimbal is off-centered like this, all you have to do is double tap the trigger, one, two, and then it'll then realign and be centered again with your horizon. And before we talk about some of the new highlights like ActiveTrack 3.0, as well as gesture control and also things like hyperlapse, uh, let's talk about some of the basic functions of the gimbal itself. And one of the cool features I like about the shutdown mode on the new Osmo 3 is that once you are in a mode just like this, it's actually working right now, and I press M and hold it down, it actually positions the gimbal in a way that all you have to do is grab it and go straight down and it'll lock into those spots right there. So you don't have to like kind of figure it out. It actually positions the gimbal in a way that all you have to do is fold it straight down and you can actually leave your phone on there, which is another nice thing. So you don't have to take it off. Then you can pack it away just like this. Then you're ready to go. All you have to do is open it up, press and hold it. And since I didn't remove my phone, it'll then rebalance out and everything should be balanced as it was when I shut it down. Switch that back to horizontal mode, and there you go. So let's go through the four gimbal modes that the Osmo Mobile 3 offers. The one I use, probably use the most is the pan and tilt follow. This allows you to then tilt and pan the Osmo 3, and it really just dampens and softens up that footage. It does not do anything as far as the roll axis, so it locks the roll, so it does not let you go left to right on the roll, but it does allow you to follow on pan and tilt. The next mode we have here is the tilt lock. Now this allows you to lock in that tilt angle. So as you can see here, if I lift it up or down, it still maintains the angle of where I set it at initially. However, the pan and the roll axis allows me to follow. So this one just locks in the tilt. The next mode we have here is FPV. Now this one actually follows all of your hand movements. Nothing is locked. So whether you're tilting, rolling, or panning, all the movements will be followed and everything of course will be softened up with the gimbal. And the last one we have here is the lock mode, also one of my favorite ones. And this one you actually have to use the trigger for. So once you hold that trigger down and whatever angle that gimbal is pointed at, it will now lock onto that specific angle. So no matter if you're tilting, you're rolling, or you're panning, the gimbal will now move and adjust and keep that subject matter and that angle you set at when you pull that trigger first, it'll maintain that all the way through. Now when it comes to user experience, I'm actually really happy that they incorporated the quick menu system onto the handle itself. So all you have to do is press the M button and then the menu system comes up. That way you're able to select anything from pano to photo to video as well as which gimbal mode you want to use all from the remote. You don't have to touch the screen anymore like you used to. 
Now the one thing that DJI has really refined is their software. Now Active Track actually came out on their drones as well as the Osmo Pocket and also the most recently their Ronin SC. Now in this video, I actually selected my son as a subject as he's riding his bike. Now the big thing was here, I was actually had to run on the side of the sidewalk on the grass, which is really bumpy. And I had to dodge a couple of trees. I just held the Osmo Mobile towards him, pointed his direction with Active Track on. I'm just super impressed on how well it kept him, not only in the middle of the frame, but actually just kept up with him. Like I said, I was just pointing this back behind me, not looking at my screen because of the fact that I had dodged trees and a bunch of other things. Now here's my son in the studio. I actually had active track on while I was doing some other things and I wanted to see if he's able to kind of quickly move left to right to see if it would actually lose him. Uh, he actually did a really good job as far as trying to do some quick movements. Active track was able to keep up with him. The only time it got a little bit confused is when I was, as you can see here, walking through the frame, as well as I brought my face in here to see if it'll then switch faces. It actually did a couple times, but that's just, we know some of these edge cases that it's gonna run into. Now gesture control actually came out a while back with the DJI Spark, which allows you to make a gesture towards the camera, which triggers a photo or a video. I wanted to see how well it does if my son and daughter are able to kind of take over the camera and do it all themselves. What's kind of cool is that when they make this peace sign here on the right hand side, it does a little countdown and then takes a photo of them. And it also has active track. So once you do the sign and it tracks you, it does the countdown and then it recenters the subject right in the middle of the frame, as you can see right here. Now there's a few different intelligent modes on the DJI Mimo app for the Mobile 3. Now there's a few like panoramic and time lapse that are pretty straightforward, but a couple I haven't used before like story and hyperlapse. Now story mode actually gives you a template to use in order for you to make a few short clips into a short movie that you're able to now post and share online. And what's great about it is that you just add the clips in, shoot them, and it does all the editing and adds the audio. Here's a sample of one of these. It was nice that they added hyperlapse into the DJI Mimo app for the Mobile 3 because it's something that they have in their drones which gives you a really unique kind of fast paced transition that you're able to use within some of your stories. Now this is just really handheld on the Mobile 3 using my iPhone X. Nothing special here but everything is done in camera so all you have to do now is just bring that file into your editing software and add it to your story. Now, there's definitely a lot of other features in the app that I'll go through in future videos, but if you're familiar with the Osmo Pocket or even now with the Ronin, uh, a lot of those features are also uh, very similar on all of those types of gimbals too. But I'll definitely try to go into more detailed videos about that. I just wanted to kind of show you some of the highlights of the new Osmo Mobile 3 in this video. Of course, I'll be leaving the links to both of these, the Osmo Standard as well as the Combo Packs down below in the video description. So if you're interested in more information or looking to pick one up, make sure you guys check out those links down below. And of course, if you guys got some value from my video, don't forget to hit that like button and always don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Aldrin Stasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.